Hey everybody, good afternoon. Um, so this is about building a security operations center. We're going to show a little video first of what they tend or people think they look like. Um, pretty awesome video. Well, not really that awesome, but here you go. We've detected an anomaly. How bad is it? Traffic's off the chart. They're pinging more targets. Isolate. Prevent damage. Got him. Great exercise, guys. Let's run it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if only we had those kind of screens. Okay, we don't work for them. <laughs> no, um, we don't. <laughs> so I want to apologize to any Lockheed Martin employees right off the bat too. Um, most security operations centers do not look like that, uh, but everybody wants them to. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what makes a security operations center? Uh, well, it's a lot of things. A lot of people think it's just an IDS system or just a firewall, and we'll get to that. But. Um, the general flow is it starts with uh, events, things that happen on the network um, or in the environment and often that gets the network environments, network things go through the IDS system. Um, there's a management system that manages that traffic, there's analyst systems, there are uh, analysts who analyze that stuff, contextual info like log data, uh, time of event, all sorts of things. Uh, reporting that thing and then incident response, just dealing with the uh, hack attempt or the malware or whatever. So what's the point though of a SOC? Uh, Chris, do you want to say something? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the security operations center is designed to give you real-time detection and response. Okay, it is a central coordination point so that you can detect everything happening on your network, whether your network is three or four machines or whether your network is 3,000 machines spread over a wide area. Um, a security operations center, as opposed to a CERT, which does a lot of incident tracking and reporting and putting out uh, reports about recommendations for how to configure things and whatnot, a SOC is operational. The key there is that it's real time, real response. Okay, so it's not just a offline log review; it's real time. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, keep everything running. You know, just. <laughs> keep it going smoothly. Uh, so it, isn't a firewall IDS or just antivirus enough? Um, well, firewall, it's, it's useful, obviously. It's, um, people know about it. Attackers know about it. It, it only protects your systems. It doesn't protect your users. Um, an antivirus, it has this lag time to catch new threats and uh, it's not going to, it's not going to catch anything brand new. Um, and it matches files, you know, not traffic patterns, not the flow of the network data. Um, the uh, IDS itself alerts on events. It's a lot like uh, antivirus software where it depends on rules to be written for it, things that have been discovered or that you might be watching for. Um, it doesn't provide context. It doesn't give you system logs, proxy logs, DNS logs, or information from users or other people. So these are the three components that every organization thinks they need to have. Uh, back in the, like the 80s, everybody had to have a firewall. That was the new thing. Everyone needed one. So as the 90s approached, everybody got a firewall. Now we're safe. And then antivirus started popping up and malware was important. So then everybody started investing in malicious code defense. Uh, now everyone has to run an intrusion detection system. There are a lot of vendors out there that do that. Vendors cost money. Uh, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So what we want to do is we want to go with these items free, cheap, low, no cost, uh -huh. but we also need to fill in the other gaps. Firewall, AV, and an intrusion detection system is not a security operations center. It's a start. It's a good core set of components, but it's not everything you need. Mm -hmm. So what's the structure of a SOC? Uh, there's a lot, a lot you can put in the SOC. Um, you've got private network and you've got people. You also have a man, uh, your main network that you're watching and the environment you're watching. Um, I'll brief over these because we go over these individually. The private network has the IDS, management systems, analyst systems, and hopefully a lab. Uh, you've got your people, which are the analysts, other experts. You've got users and management. And all this is happening real, in real time, 24-7. Uh, you've got to keep watching everything that's happening. 
I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Do I want to say anything about that? <laughs> um, what you need is a balance between technology and meat space. Uh, the computers, no matter how good your technology is, and no matter how much automation people are putting in, you're still going to need people to look at your logs. You're still going to pe need people to analyze the anomalies, to figure out what's really going on. Uh, most of the systems that we already talked about, the firewalls and IDS as an AV attack, or try to defend against known threats. Okay? That there's going to be a group of stuff that you know is good on your network, whether you're using anomaly based or not. A group of stuff that you know is good, and a group of stuff that you suspect is bad. But in the middle of that is going to be a whole big group of, I don't know, someone has to look at that. So that's what the analysts are for. That's what the people are for. So the, talking about the private network, <clears throat> uh, you want to have a secure communication uh, network between your IDS management system, analyst systems. Um, you don't want it to be accessible to anyone trying to attack it. Attack it. You want it to be, uh, you want to keep malware off the systems. Um, and you want to be able to do, provide management and update of the IDS and the rules. So I have some diagrams of simple, uh, simple network diagrams of things you could do. So this one here, I don't have a laser pointer, <laughs> but you can just. <laughs> this is really simple. So you've got this network. You've got a switch. Um, it's probably not managed in this case. Um, you've got a hub, unfortunately, <laughs> going before the router, and um, you've got the the IDS system watching all traffic that comes from that switch and hopefully your server there is providing your DHCP and stuff, not your router, um, so you can see everything that's going on. This could be a basic diagram for somebody's home network. If they were an enthusiast and they wanted to start learning about this stuff on their own systems. Or if you have, you know, if you have a family and you have kids or what have you, if you have a number of different computers there or in a small office environment, um, not all uh, security operation centers, just in, the idea is that every organization should have one but they don't always start that way. So sometimes it starts as a little project in a little office with some people that care and know how to do it. Okay, so this would replicate that type of environment where you just want to look at everything you've got just starting out. And so this, is, this one is a more complex one. This would be for maybe a small organization that has a managed switch uh, where you can uh, span, uh, mirror the ports to one. So it's kind of the same idea as the last one um, except you got rid of that hub. You've got the network going, uh, going through that, it's basically the same thing. It's just like here, well, you probably get it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, this next one is a more complex one where you might have a DMZ. So you've got, your DMZ is a, a you've got to have your external IDS system. It's a separate from another system that has your internal LAN segments. And um, this could be scaled up uh, to worldwide systems. The key is that all the information from all of the IDSs, which if you're not in a network or an environment where you can monitor all of your traffic from either a hub or a spanned port switch, if your switches don't support that because they don't all do that, or if you're in a just such a huge environment that you need multiple taps. What? <laughs> if you're in a network where you have multiple taps, the key is to get all the data as securely as you can back to your management systems, to your analyst stations so that you can start looking at it. Yeah. And you can, have, you can have any number of IDS systems. They can all send data to one management system or multiple management, which would be kind of a nightmare. Um, and you can have multiple analyst systems um, all accessing that management system. You could additionally, we'll get to this too, but you could additionally have everything running on one box. You could have management, analyst, uh, IDS. So talking about the actual IDS systems themselves, you're going to want to have a secured OS. Um, Linux is probably the best to do um, for this. Uh, they have things, the software like Snort, they have it on um, Windows, but I, I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, so you want to learn how to secure the, secure the OS. There are a lot of guidelines. NSA has some good guidelines on securing uh, all the different operating systems that you can find online. Um, the software, there's Snort, which is a really popular open source software created by Sourcefire. They have a, um, a version that you can pay for, which offers more, but Snort is fantastic. There's also a new one called Suricata. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but um, I believe, I might be wrong about this, but I think some people from Sourcefire went off and started that. It's a, it's a great, another great IDS software. Um, and it's, it's used, it uses rules um, that you can write or are also maintained by community and by Sourcefire to uh, watch for network anomalies. 
you've got, um, there's a software called Barnyard 2 which will take the data from Snort and send it off to your MySQL database or Oracle database or whatever. You've got, um, there's a thing called Pulled Pork which replaces something that that was called Oink Master. It uh, will manage your rules, so if you have custom rules, it will actually keep them intact instead of overriding them every single time. And you've got S Tunnel, which will uh, securely transfer all that data from Barnyard 2 uh, that comes from Snort, secure it over any network segment of any kind to your database server, which is um, possibly your management station. And then you also have um, packet capture. You've got to have constant running packet capture so you can review packets um, or network transactions as you see things happening. And uh, TCP dump can be set to write as a, uh, run as a daemon and can save files of any size or certain time lengths. There's also a program called daemon logger that is, uh, looks pretty great. It actually can run as a software tap. So um, I'll get to taps later. But uh, it will write out PCAP files, or dump files, and also run as a software tap on a really inexpensive system. So there's a tendency, whether you're in a corporate environment, whether you're working with government, or whether you're doing this on your own, to over-engineer any facet of your security infrastructure. Okay, when we're talking about a secured OS, uh, as Josh mentioned, Linux is the best choice for that. It's the most flexible. There are a lot of distros already set up. There are a lot of pre-built things that will run this very securely, very safely. You can bump up to OpenBSD if you really need something secure. You can write a custom OS. There's a lot of different things that you can do for this. Um, the IDS software, we mentioned Snort and all the supporting tools for that. Snort has been around a very long time. Props to those guys. Those guys are awesome. Um, there are a lot of commercial IDSs that are based very heavily on what Snort has done. If you want to spend money, you can spend money and buy something like that or you can use Snort or something very similar and you can, you can roll your own. You can do a lot of very good things custom to your environment with Snort that you can't do with other things or that vendors will not do for you. Okay, so this isn't just where we look for open source stuff and that's all we're going to talk about. There are some distinct advantages to this. And the one final point on this is when we're talking about the packet capture, if you're in a large environment, packet capture is a huge problem simply because of size. You cannot capture all of the packets going across your network and all of the data all the time and then be able to look at it. So you may have to build custom rules as to what you want to capture and let them have triggers or targets as far as you really want to see everything to certain groups, certain servers, and then understand that there, if you're in a more complex environment, there are some systems that you just don't really want to see all that important information for. Yeah. And you know, there are a lot of, uh, as you're saying, there are a lot of uh, pre-built distros. There's some live CDs out there. I don't know if I put them in the slides, but um, there's something called Easy IDS, which is fantastic. Uses Snort. Uses some management software. It can run off the CD. There's other ones too. Some really great stuff out there. Uh, so this is what Snort looks like. I mean, kind of. It's part of it as it's running. You see the little piggy there, though. That's the cutest part over on the left bottom. And uh, it's snorting up all those packets. So the management system itself you also want a secured OS for this thing. Um, and all, all this stuff is still on your, it's on your private network. Um, with, it depends on what kind of uh, management software you're using, but what I'm going to show a little bit of is uh, using LAMP, using Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Um, and you have management software. That's the stuff I was just mentioning. You've got Base, which is a uh, popular, kind of old, kind of dated, um, but it's still good. It's, it's a, uh, looks like, I don't know, from the web from the 90s or something, but it's fine. Um, you've got S GUI, which is Snort GUI. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, it will display real-time events popping up. Um, it was a bit of a pain to configure, so I don't have that for you, but sorry. Snorby, same thing. It's actually a web 2.0 version of base. I mean, if the person who made Snorby heard me say that, they may, they may not like it, but um, it's pretty nice. And uh, there's other stuff to grab logs like Splunk, uh, OSIM, there's Nagios to keep watch over your servers or um, report any kind of, you know, anything you want. Again, all good options. Um, the key components here as far as the management system is this is just your overhead system. This is what your, uh, keeping track of your IDS is keeping track of your security infrastructure. We want to emphasize again these should be on secured OSs. This should be on a private network if possible. Um, nothing is more embarrassing than having your security infrastructure hacked for an organization. Uh, we, we've seen it and, it and it's bad. So this is what base looks like. Um, uh, you kind of have to, it refreshes, you can change the refresh rate, but it's not very exciting. Um, 
but I'll show you a little bit more based in a little while. Uh, the analyst systems also secured OS. Ho 